We're back in the Average Kitchen. Jamie here, standing in for Mark today. And we're gonna look at the Ninja Foodie Flip Toaster today. So we have no affiliation with Ninja. We bought this ourselves. I'm not sure why, because it costs about $200, but we're gonna find out if it's worth it for you. $220, thank you, Mark. So it's a flip toaster. As you can see here in this orientation, it's like a traditional toaster. The catch here is you can flip it down. There's a little hinge on the back here. And now you have a toaster oven. It comes with this fancy tray that just slides in. Premium display. They say it works on 1500 watts, if anyone cares about that, I don't. As far as dimensions go, we're looking at about 16 inches wide, uh, six and a half inches, sorry, 16 inches long, about six and a half wide. And when it's flipped up, what do we got there? Eight and a half tall. I'd say maybe a little bigger than, certainly longer than a normal toaster. Of course, skinnier than uh, like a four piece toaster, but not overly large. It'll certainly fit on your countertop if that's what you wanna do with it. So let's jump into the test. So the first test we're gonna do is toast. It's toaster, right? So we're gonna see what it does. We thought of a couple ways to do this, but we're, we settled on putting the toast in. There's different uh, darkness settings for the toast. We're gonna go, the highest is seven. Obviously the lowest will be one. So we're gonna start on one. Minute 30. See that time ticking down here. There we go. Probably gonna be hot, but let's see. Well, I guess it said as advertised, we set it on one. Now you can't tell on the camera, but it feels toasted. So I will say there is some toasting that happens. So you know what? If I wanted a light toasting, I would actually say that was a win. I was, I was afraid that the lowest setting would do nothing. You can see there's a couple of toast marks on there. Up here, down here. Let's see what it does with the highest setting. You wanna try it in between. We can try in between. So we're gonna go, what, three or four? Let's go four. Four. Caught you here with, as you can see, the toast is up. We're watching the timer. There's probably 30 or 40 seconds still left and it just popped up. So we're not sure why, but we're gonna roll with it. So this is on four and to me. Quite toast. Quite toasted. Uh, that's, that for me would be how I want my toast. So sort of golden brown. I'd say that's a mid-level toast. Let's try number seven. Now the unit is already hot. I wonder how that factors in, but hey, sometimes you want more than two pieces of toast. So that I think Jump the timer again. As you can see, we're in burn country here. I guess there's people out there that like their toast burnt. I'm not one of them, but if you like your, your toast burnt, you can do it in one cycle. You don't have to put it back in. So I guess that's a pro for some people. I would never put it on seven anyway, so it really doesn't matter to me. In terms of the levels though, if you go from you know level one, then mid-level we did four, and then the high level at seven, to me, that's pretty consistent. So I think you can get pretty accurate level of toasting to your preference. Bagel time. They call this the premium display. I'm not so sure about that, but there is a bagel setting. So we're gonna hit bagel. There is different shades of this too. Same thing, one to seven. I presume it would be a similar result. So we're gonna go four. And like I said, that would be my desired level of toasting. And let's see what happens with the bagel. All right, so the bagels are done and it actually jumped the time again. So we're thinking there's, there must be some kind of thermometer or something inside where if the unit's already heated up, it doesn't take the full time. But as for the bagels, what did I say four? It was on four. To me, that's a toasted bagel for, to my liking. Mid-level uh, uh, toast, I think it's good. We were talking during that toasting that the big pro to this is, not only is it consistent between the levels, but if I turn the toast over, pretty consistent on both sides. You know, some toasters cook, you know, stronger on the outside than the inside, but this is super consistent. So, so far as a toaster, I think it's great. The next test we want to do is nachos. So obviously, as you can see the amount here, this is just like a personal size nacho platter and maybe even too small for that. Certainly if you've seen the bellies in the average kitchen, this is too small. So for this, we're gonna to have to flip the unit down, which is actually kind of hot. And then you got to push the toast thing back. Now we're gonna kind of guess a little bit on here. So we're gonna do bake. We'll keep it at 350. 12 minutes is way too long, I'm sure. So we're gonna go down 30 second increments is actually pretty cool. Four minutes. So you just slide it in there. By the way, we put tin foil to minimize the cleanup and start. And our nachos are ready. Put them down here. Actually, I'd say they're 
Pretty perfect. I mean, a little overcooked on the edges there, but that happens in the oven too. Cheese is certainly melted. That's going to burn me for sure, but I'm going to try one in a minute here. I just want to talk about what we noticed during this. Our biggest con right off the hop when we were doing it was there's no way to see what's going on other than pulling the tray up. After a while, when you get used to cooking the same foods, you're going to know, okay, it's going to be this temperature for this time, and it won't be a big deal. When you're first starting out, but you can't see what's going on, it's kind of a bummer. However, when you do pull the tray out to check, the timer pauses automatically, which is a good feature. So we've actually had other Ninja products where you pull trays out or you, you, you check the food and the timer doesn't stop, and we always found that to be a con. So I guess we can't complain both ways. How does it taste, you ask? Gonna burn. Hot. Cheese is lava, but it's a plate of nachos. Obviously we just put cheese on it, very, very basic, but it baked the nachos. <laughs> Every kid's favorite, certainly one of mine when I was a kid, a grilled cheese sandwich. Again, we made it very basic. We just buttered the outside of the bread. We got your Kraft Singles on there. Again, we're kind of guessing on the cook time and temperature here, but we decided we're going with 350 again. Four minutes, we're gonna try that again. So start, the old ninja chime, and away we go. Timer went off. We had to add a couple minutes to cook because we checked it like halfway through and it was only the butter melted. There was no other signs of cooking. So we have six minutes total. So we actually don't know how it's gonna look, but there you go. I mean, to me, that needs more time. Maybe we'll go a couple more minutes. It's nine minutes. Put on the grilled cheese. So Whoa. now we're getting some in average kitchen tradition. I'm gonna bite it way too early. Could have cooked a little longer, but certainly a satisfactory grilled cheese. If you wanna cook longer, cook it longer. <laughs> We are just discussing, I'm not even really sure is Pizza Pockets just a Canadian thing? I know Canadians out there definitely would know what Pizza Pockets are. McCain in this case, but obviously there's other brands. So if you're American watching this show, let us know. Have you heard of Pizza Pockets before? We got our Pizza Pockets here, three of them ready to go. They're frozen. We looked at the package, so we're gonna go 425. We're gonna go by their instructions. 400's the max. So we're gonna go with 400. And the time they suggested was 16 to 18 minutes. I guess that means we're going 18. All right, so a couple seconds left and we're gonna have the Ninja ding any second now. Let's see how they turned out. They look great, I must say. We were a bit skeptical about the cook time and the temperature given that the max was 400 and it called for uh, more than that. She's steaming. I mean, that's definitely cooked, but very crispy on the outside. You could probably hear, and it pro I don't know if you can even hold it. No. Maybe even overcooked? Well, you know what? Maybe. I think it's certainly edible, like it's not burnt or anything. Again, this would be a personal preference thing, but I can tell you the outside shell is quite hard, hard and crispy. So if that's your thing, great, it cooked perfectly. Considering that the instructions told us 425 for 16 to 18 minutes, we went less than that, so this thing obviously gets pretty ripping hot and cooks fast. So before I take a bite of that lava in that pizza pocket, we're gonna go with chicken nuggets, our last test. Now it says it can hold 15. We do have foil in here like we've mentioned to cut down on the uh, cleaning. So I think it can fit 15 of this size, but just. So I don't know how big chicken nuggets are where they are, I guess it'd be this size. You wouldn't have any smaller, so this must be what they're referring to. So we'll put this in. Now, this has in the book, they do mention chicken nuggets on their cooking chart here, and it does say 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. So we're already at 400. Now our cook time so far, it seems like everything is cooked fairly quickly. So I'm gonna say 15 will probably do it, especially with the pizza pocket results. So we'll go with 15. And now that that's started, let me bring my pizza pockets back. I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. Ha! One bite, everybody knows the rules. It turned out not as crispy as we thought. It's almost like flaky. Super cooked, it certainly turned out. So adjust your cooking times accordingly. You probably have to experiment with this thing, depending on what you're cooking a couple times, but once you get it down, it'll certainly cook what you want. So let's see how the nuggets turn out. All right, 15 minutes on the nuggets, so we'll see how they turned out. For me, I like them a little crispier than that, but. You wanna give them five more? Yeah, let's give them five. So our extra five minutes is done. And now we're talking. Try one. <laughs> Immediately try one. So I'm kind of funny with nuggets. I would actually even go more. I like them real crispy, but that's cooked. I mean, there's no doubt that's cooked enough. Now that the nuggets are less than 800 degrees, even though they're only cooked on 400, I will try one. Still could hurt here, but it's been a few minutes actually. 
Oh, good. It tastes like the cheapest nuggets I could find, but they're certainly cooked through. I think in the oven, it'd be the same. So some of the pros about this product, obviously that it does two in one thing. So you have the toaster and you have the oven. Of course, any toaster oven will do both of those things, but hey, got to give it credit where credit's due. So it does do both. The other big pro, of course, is the size. It might be a bit longer, like we talked about, than a regular toaster. Considering all the functions it can do, it's pretty small. It could easily fit on your countertop, no problem. Another thing that's kind of a pro or a con could be what to do with the size is the amount of food that you can cook at once. The tray here, if we measure it, uh, we got just under 10 inches long, about five and three quarter inches wide. So that's pretty small for something to be cooking. If you're cooking for yourself, you might see that as a pro because you only need a certain amount of stuff. Portions are smaller. But if you're cooking for even two people, I would say this is probably too small. You're going to need multiple cooks. So the toasting was a definitely a pro like the toasted very evenly very consistent the levels were what you'd expect so i would say that's a total pro and even the cooking times for the other food we made it cooked really fast it cooked really evenly so it, it certainly did the job but then we go to the cons con number one as you can imagine 220 dollars canadian for this toaster i don't know mark you're just a guy in the world going about your business if you had to buy yourself a countertop appliance to do your basic snacking, $220. We've had a lot of luck with the Ninja name. We've actually reviewed quite a few Ninja products. Check them out on the channel. This one, typically their build quality is really good. This one though, like I don't, you may not be able to tell on camera, but this is kind of flimsy. I mean, the handle even moves. I don't know why. And it just kind of feels cheap. And then when you, Maybe you already saw this when we were cooking, but when you go to put this in, I mean, look at, what's that? What is that? There's a gap, it's not flush, it's just kinda cheap. That's kind of unfortunate. So the last con I can think of is, is what I talked about before, which could be a pro for you, is the small toaster section, where you're only cooking two pieces of toast at a time, of course, most toasters only do two slices at a time. I guess that's not terrible, but for something this size and expensive, maybe a little more than two would be nice. But to you, that might be fine. So as for cleaning, oh, it was super easy. You saw that we put the uh, tin, foil uh, tin foil on the tray, purely out of laziness, average kitchen laziness, because we didn't want to clean this after. As you can tell, there's a couple crumbs in there, but it's already clean, that's it for cleanup. And then if you turn the unit around, we have the crumb tray that is, of course, super easy to pull out and then i don't know what you do with it from there because it doesn't pull out more that's what you got All right. which i guess goes back to the build quality of this it just seems flimsy. it just seems kind of flimsy do we recommend this do you have 220 bucks to burn yeah buy this thing you can make yourself a small plate of nachos a couple pizza pockets still have time for that grilled cheese sandwich if you don't have 220 bucks to spare and you want to spend it on something you'll actually use or more than two slices of bread, don't buy it. Tell us what you think in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one.